So, now we talk about the multilayer uh, perceptron. So, in the multilayer perceptron, we have uh, an input layer, a hidden layer, and an output layer. Okay, the hidden layer, there may be two hidden layers or a single hidden layer basically. So, there is no connection within a layer. Okay, so, one layer will have nodes like this, it is only connected to the next layer. And we have directed links starting from the input going to the output basically. Okay. Uh, so, there is no connection between the input and output layer. In the perceptron, we had a connection between the input layer and the output layer because there was no hidden layer in between. Okay. But we saw that we could only do linearly separable cases over there. Okay. Other cases, it would not be able to give a proper uh, output for that. Okay. So, what you have is you have the input layer either one hidden layer or two hidden layers and an output layer. Okay. And the number of output layers need not be equal to the number of input uh, units because the input depends on how many inputs you are giving in. Okay. And the output depends on how much, what is the output that you are getting out. Okay. So, if your input is for example, uh, a pattern Okay, in which you are trying to find the class label, then uh, the input depends on the dimension of your input or depends on the number of features that you have. So, if you have D features, you are going to have D inputs and the output would be a class label. So, it depends on how you are representing your output class label. Suppose uh, your output is, is just a binary output, okay. So, you could have the output as either 0 or 1, okay. So, you could have just one output node, okay. And whatever you get as the output of that will be your class label that you are looking for, okay. Or if it is, uh, Boolean 0 or 1, yes or no, or binary. But uh, otherwise, uh, if you have say uh, class 1, class 2, class 3, your output could be 3 nodes, okay, where you could say if, if this is 0, this is 1 and this is 0, this is class 2. If this is 1 and these two are 0, then it is class 1, otherwise it is class 3, etc. So, the output depends on the output which you are basically looking for. Okay. So, here uh, we have uh, a hidden layer. So, we need to find another set of weights basically here. So, what do we have here? This is your, your input nodes. We have the hidden layer here, hidden layer 1. This is your output. Okay. So, we have one hidden layer here. So, uh, so we have these uh, weights here, W11, W12, etc., W21, W22. And then from here to the output, we have H11, H12, H21, H22, etc. So, the weights that we are trying to find are these weights okay, and these weights. Okay. So, what you are going to get is you are going to get an error here. Okay. There is a particular output you are expecting, but you are getting a certain output and you are using that error to update these weights as well as these weights. Okay. So, that is how you update the weights over here. So, let us see how this uh, updation is basically carried out. Okay. So, we have first of all the output that we are getting. Okay. So, this is the output we are talking about here and those are added up and we get the output here. Okay. So, the actual value 
minus the output that you are getting gives you the error okay and you are using that error to update these weights over here okay so hji is equal to hji plus alpha into a hj that is the input what which you are getting here into delta j where delta j is f dash of ai so whatever um, activation function you are using so usually the sigmoid activation function is used here so you find the differential of that okay so the differential of that into ei okay which is the error that you've got here that is used over here okay to update these weights once you have updated these weights you have to update these weights here okay so wkj is equal to wkj plus alpha where alpha is the learning rate like i said into xk xk is the input which we have given in here okay here also ahj is the input that we have here into delta j where the delta j is f dash of ahj okay sigma of wji into delta i with the delta i which you have used here okay so this is the way you are going to update all the weights in your network and you are using one uh, learning factor here so that your wkj will be the wkj plus or minus some small amount in each iteration basically so let us see again how this is done right so you have the input x1 to xd right and you you have the weights w11 w22 etc okay and then the weights from the, from the hidden layer h11 h12 okay so that's what we have here okay so these are the w11 w22 etc these are the h11 h12 etc and the activation of the hidden unit will be x1 into w1j plus x2 into w2j etc right and then you take the output of the j hidden node to be equal to f of a h j depending on the activation that you have used basically okay then if you take the output node a1 a2 a3 it will be this o h1 into h11 o h2 etc right and here again you take the activation function of that okay now if you output target output is t1 t2 to tn then your error ei will be ti minus oi right so your hji is equal to hji plus alpha into oj so your oj is the input that you are getting okay into the error that you have into g dash of ai that is the differential of the activation that you have used okay so here um, uh, we consider an application over here where we talk about digit recognition okay so digit recognition suppose we are trying to recognition recognize the digits 0 to 9 okay and we have a 4 by 4 pixel over here which represents the um, digit that you are talking about so suppose it is 1 right so if your 1 is going to be like this your pattern should be like this will be 0 0 1 0 0 1 1 0 etc right so all the values of all these pixels that you have are all concatenated together okay so we get 16 values and these 16 values are given as input to your neural network right so we are going to have something like 16 values which you are giving in over here as your input right and if the output is such that it appears as a binary number we need four bits okay the, uh, therefore the output will be four values if the output is 0000, zero, zero, zero it means it belongs to class zero okay so suppose we want uh, uh, value values which are 0 to 9 okay then we could have 4 bits 
Okay, so you can have four outputs. And depending on the values of those four outputs that we are getting, so suppose it is 0, 0, 0, 0, the output, it means it belongs to class 0. If the output of your neural network is 0, 0, 0, 1, it means it belongs to class 1, etc. Right? So these are some applications that we have for neural networks. Pattern classification, we just saw the previous example, right? So you could have any example of that type, image processing, uh, speech analysis, optimization uh, problems, stock market forecasting, simulation, robot steering, a whole lot of applications are there for neural networks basically. So we need to see the design issue. So the design issue is very important here. What are the number of nodes in the input layer and the number of nodes in the output layer? Okay. So number of nodes in input layer depends on the input which you are giving in to your network. Number of nodes in the output layer depends on what is the output that you want from the neural network. Then you have the other network topology details. For example, how many hidden layers do you have? Okay. Um, now how many nodes do you have in each of the hidden layers? Right. And what type of network topology are you going to use? Feed forward or recurrent network, etc. Right. So we could say that number of hidden layers um, generally in the case of neural networks it's found that two hidden layers are enough. You could use one hidden layer. You could also experiment and see what gives you a better result and use that. And number of hidden nodes also you could ex experiment. Generally, it could be smaller than the number of nodes in the input layer or it could be more, it depends. And then what are the weights and biases you are going to start with? Okay. Usually you can start with the random assignment. Okay. So you can say that you are going to put all the weights as values between 0 and 1 taken uh, randomly, right? Similarly, biases also you can do the same thing. Um, one more important thing here is that missing value should not be there. Okay, so, if you have training examples with missing values, you should either remove those or you should replace it or you should uh, uh, put something in place of the hidden value of the missing value. Okay, so, it is very important that uh, these design issues should be taken care of in a neural network. So, that uh, actually is uh, very important in a neural network. So, if we take the learning rate, the le learning rate is generally between 0 and 1. So, the, the lower the learning rate is, the faster, it, uh, the longer it may take to uh, um, to come to the correct value. So, that is the thing about the learning rate. So, the learning rate, uh, it is good if it is uh, a small value and gradually it comes to the what you are basically talking about here. So, these are some uh, very important issues, design issues. One more thing here is when we talk about the weights and, and biases being taken at random, right? Um, it, it's also possible that you can take the weights which have been already trained for some other network, right? And and use those over here. Okay. So those type of aspects are what are known as the transfer learning techniques, where you are going to start by assigning the weights depending on the weights which were available from some other problem and then uh, do from there. Or if you have some information about what the weights can be or uh, uh, you know it, it could be uh, somewhere uh, you know around this, you, you can actually start off with using some information and, and setting the weights. 
Okay, so what are the characteristics of the artificial neural network? So what we have seen here is that it is a multi-layer neural network with at least one hidden layer. They are what are called universal approximators, right? Um, how does the ANN handle redundant features? What you find is that weights will be automatically very low for those features um, which are not important, right? Or if it is a redundant feature, you find that the weights for those links coming out from those features will be very small, okay? And neural networks are sensitive to the presence of noise. So, you have to be very careful, okay, to see that uh, uh, you need to remove noise, especially uh, uh, patterns which are uh, 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 not giving the correct information or uh, has uh, missing values, etc. Okay, now when we come to training an ANN, okay, it takes a very long time, right? especially when you have hidden nodes, okay, you find that the training takes a very long time. Sometimes uh, you have to use the entire training data, if you have a larger training data better, right? So, if you use it and if you update the weights, then um, you may have to go through the training examples all over again, right? So, you have to do it till you find that most of the uh, examples are classified correctly, right? Only when the examples, uh, the training examples are being classified uh, correctly, then uh, you can say that your neural network has been trained. And once it has been trained, you can use the test examples and classify them, okay? So, classifying the test examples will be very fast, okay? because all you need to do is pass it through the neural network once, okay? So, if you uh, give it as input to the neural network, it is like having a black box, okay? So, we have, uh, we have a black box, we do not know what is happening inside it, okay? This is the input I am giving and this is the output I am getting, okay? So, the output may give you which class it is. So, all you need to do is pass it through this black box, okay? Once you pass it through the black box, it gives you the result of what you are basically looking for. So, we can say that the training is time consuming, okay? So, like we saw earlier, the design time is very high, right? The design time is very high, right? But the training uh, classification time is very low, right? So, once you have trained a neural network, you can use that new neural network and you do not need to store the entire training examples for testing. All you need is to store the neural network, okay? So, the information space requirement is also very little, okay? So, it is possible that if you already have your neural network which is trained, you could use it on um, devices such as the mobile, etc., okay? Because you do not need to store the entire training data, the space requirement is less and um, the classification time is also less. So, we can see that these are some of the advantages of the ANN. That um, it can be classified rapidly, so classification time is less and space requirement is also less, right? So, we will leave it at this for neural networks, even though there's, there are a lot of other issues which you can uh, actually speak on, we will uh, uh, leave uh, neural networks at uh, this point. So, let us close the session now.